Hey, what's going on everybody? I just wanted to take a brief moment out your day to give you a period of reflection, right? And what I wanted to um, bring to the table of discussion is this. Some of us have employees or some of us um, are in a work culture where people don't feel good about themselves, that people are constantly struggling to feel confident. And um, generally when you are working um, with people or, or with organizations or um, even with yourself and when you don't feel a sense of self-confidence or a sense of self-worth, um, you're not going to perform at your best. Uh, we all know as leaders that our people perform at a high rate when they're confident, when they're feeling good about themselves in the situation or in their, their culture that they work in, right? So what I wanted to um, share with you guys is something very simple. This is not going to take long, but this is going to be simple advice that's going to help tremendously increase performance but as well make you aware as leaders on what you can do to manage that right so um, it's important for us to know this it's a very important for you to understand that self-esteem and self-discipline go hand in hand self-esteem and self-discipline go hand in hand so what does that mean for us right how can I bring that concept into the work environment how can I bring that concept and help people become more confident and have a sense of more self-worth for themselves and the organization and the team. It's very easy. If you understand that these two exist, you have to deal with both, right? So you really can't drive someone's self-esteem. And that's a difficult thing. That's, a, that's, the, that's an esteem of oneself, how they feel about themselves. A lot of time that's in, intrinsic, meaning that it comes from within. But what you can drive and what you can support and what you can do is focus on the self-discipline part. As leaders, we have the ability to put task in front of our people. And as leaders, we have the ability to plan for our people, right? So if those things remain true and we have control over issuing our task or creating plans to gauge people's development, then innately, one would assume that the plan or the task ought to improve the discipline of that person. How do you do that? So, I'm going to give you an example. You might have an employee right now that just might be disengaged by something they're dealing with personally or even within, within the organization of themselves. Help them remain focused. Give them a sense of focus. Give them a few tasks um, so you can encourage them, you can push them, you can hold them accountable to it, and you can allow them to see and track their growth or their progression. And that's important. That's highly important. That's something that's usually missed out seven out of time seven out of ten times it's missed out and we tend to take for granted that people should know what to do and a lot of times that's not the case that's the beauty of being in a manager or in a leadership position or just an owner or an operator whatever the case might be you have the ability to set in place tasks or plans to allow people to work it and then create ways that you can check in with that person and give them progress checks or that you have systems or resources that they can gauge their progress that in of itself will not only show that you care and show that you're involved but again if that person's disciplined enough to accomplish the task to work the plan it will it will increase their self-esteem hands down hands down think of your own personal situation usually we feel pretty confident because we're doing things and we're doing it well so if those two are remain true, that one, we're doing things and we're doing it well, it would also remain true that we ought to plan for things and plan for it well in terms of how we follow up and how we engage that person. I just hope, not that I hope, I know that this will work. This is going to help you tremendously to slow down, right? So the next step would be how do I plan? What task do I give my employee to help them build more confidence? Well, that's gonna, that's gonna rely on you and that relationship with the employee. Oftentimes, people move so quickly and move so fast, they don't spend time connecting with that employee. And, and you may not even understand what's important, what's that person's why? Why are they even working for you? Why are they even doing what they do? If you spend that time, that intimate time with them, sit down with them, discover their why, discover exactly what they're passionate about, and then introduce a plan for them, and then give them feedback, and then guide them along the way, encourage them along the way, hold them accountable when they're not stepping up when they know they can, you will, you will see tremendous results, right? And the goal is not to always put yourself in a position where you're giving the plan. That's not the end goal, that's the start. The end goal is that person coming to you 
coming to the organization, introducing a plan, and then working that plan, and being confident that they're participating in something greater than themselves. That is beauty. That's confidence. That's what we need for high performance. Again, I hope that this helps, and I know that this will allow you as leaders to think about things differently. Slow down. Use the people around you. Use your resources. You've been in the game long enough. Connect. You'll be surprised what will happen. You guys take care.